Thank you for joining us today to learn more about food safety and how it does start with all of us. Our review sections today for our food safety agenda will be food safety and operations, good housekeeping, bloodborne pathogens, food safety and illness, MHE cleaning, food safety, GMPs and GWPs, pest control, allergen awareness, glass and brittle plastics, security and food defense, sanitation, chemical control, cross-contamination, shipping receiving, and finally, HACCP. Food safety and operations. Packaging materials, slip sheets, empty containers, and other non-food materials used in the food packaging process must be inspected and controlled under the same conditions and, and requirements as food products. Evidence of any of these issues must be brought to the supervisor's attention immediately. All trailers must be inspected prior to loading or unloading of any product. Pest activity, dead or alive, structural integrity, for instance, no holes or openings that could allow pests or other environmental concerns into the trailer. Residue, debris, or strong odors must be reported prior to loading or unloading of any product. Refrigerated trailer interior temperatures must be documented immediately upon leaving the trailer. All trailer inspections and temperature recordings must be documented. All food products must be placed on a slip sheet or pallet. No product or packaging material is allowed to be placed directly on the floor. Pallets that become contaminated must be taken out of use and marked as hold or damaged until properly disposed of or decontaminated. Any bagged product must have a slip sheet between the product and the pallet. If double stacked, a slip sheet must be used between the top of the product and the pallet stacked on top. Material handling equipment must be cleaned prior to use. Finally, damaged food products found in storage areas must be removed immediately to the damaged area and disposed of or overpacked per customer requirements. Notify your supervisor for directions. Good housekeeping practices. Great housekeeping practices are fundamental to maintain a clean, productive, organized, and safe work environment. Good housekeeping allows us to function more efficiently and productively. Good housekeeping helps us to identify and remove hazards that can lead to a variety of accidents. Good housekeeping helps to reduce slips, trips, and falls, the second most common injury, trips. Good housekeeping helps protect product and you from falling objects. Good housekeeping reduces maintenance costs. Follow the golden rules. A place for everything and everything in its place. Put away, do not just put it down. Keep work areas neat and clean. A clean work area is easier to clean than a messy one. If you spill it, wipe it up. If you make a mess, clean it up. Place trash in approved containers. Keep aisles unobstructed. Cluttered aisles may block evacuation and cause falls. Keep your MHE clean of debris. MHE is material handling equipment. Whether you're driving a sit down, a reach, or a pallet jack, always keep it clean from debris. Bloodborne Pathogens Training. Bloodborne pathogens are infectious disease-causing microorganisms in blood and bodily fluids. Certain roles in the warehouse are at higher risk for exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Certain bloodborne pathogens can still be infectious for days outside of the body. Hepatitis B can live in dried blood for up to a week and hepatitis C can survive for up to four days. Important rules when it comes to potential bloodborne pathogen exposure. The universal standard, treat all blood and certain blood fluids as if they are known to be infectious. Point one, always wear disposable gloves when providing first aid care. See your manager for the location of the bloodborne pathogen cleanup kit. Point two, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth during or after providing first aid care. Point three, thoroughly wash your hands or any other exposed areas immediately after providing care. Point four, 
disposed of sharps in designated sharps containers immediately after use. Sharps are usually used for needles, but could also include broken glass, razor, or utility knives. Point five, remove disposable gloves without contacting the soiled part of the glove immediately and dispose in a proper container. PPE will be provided by shippers where appropriate. Personal protective equipment includes the use of any or all of the following shoe covers, gown, hairnet, safety mask, and face shield, gloves, absorbable pads, red biohazard bags for hazardous materials, blood borne exposure to food products. Any exposed food product to any blood borne pathogen would be considered contaminated. Contaminated food products would use shipper's damage process. Food safety and illness. Each year, one in six Americans get sick from eating contaminated food caused by consuming contaminated foods or beverages. The CDC, or Center for Disease Control, estimates that each year, 48 million people get sick from foodborne illness, 128,000 are hospitalized, and 3,000 die. A food-grade warehouse is an important player in the safe distribution of our food supply. That's where the shippers group comes into play. Challenges in warehouse storage of food products range from segregation to prevention of cross-contamination to pest control and food security. Contaminated or unclean food can be very dangerous, especially to pregnant women, small children, the elderly, and people with weakened immune systems. Symptoms of food illness can include severe headache, vision, high fever, diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain, and fatigue. Four principles of the food safety in food grade logistics, sanitation, pest control, lot traceability, and personal hygiene. Let's learn some more. MHE cleaning training. Material handling equipment, such as forklifts, cherry pickers, pallet jacks, and reach trucks, all are handling various types of products all day long. It's important to keep your equipment clean to avoid cross-contamination of different products and chemicals. As always, you must be trained and certified on the specific equipment inside this building before you are authorized to operate any equipment. MHE operators are required to properly clean the piece of equipment they are working with each day. Passenger compartments, body, and forks of the MHE must be free from debris, wiped down daily. If while moving freight your forks puncture product, clean the MHE before handling other freight. Wipe down or clean the equipment as needed. If a hose on MHE leaks or sprays out, move away from customer freight. Do not trail the leak across the building. Turn off lift and notify the supervisor. Report area fluid leak or spray to supervisor for immediate cleanup. Anytime your MHG is contaminated with product, chemical, or debris, it must be wiped down before con contacting any food products. Food safety GMPs or GWPs. Sometimes this is called good manufacturing practices. Other times you will hear good warehousing practices. These are basically a set of rules to keep our customers and products safe from contamination when it comes to food safety. Required practices. Wash your hands before returning to work. In the warehouse or work zone, there will be no eating or food allowed, no lunch or snacks in the warehouse. In the warehouse or work zone, there will be no drinks other than water in a clear water bottle with a sealed lid, no tobacco use, no chewing gum, etc. Practice good housekeeping in your area. Warehouse grounds. Do not litter. Use the trash cans. Follow all posted GMP GWP signage. Continued required warehouse GMP practices. Employees with open or infected wounds or with contagious illnesses 
are to report it to management immediately. Band-Aids and bandages shall be covered in packaging processing areas at all times. Clothing must be clean and free from foreign material. All clothing is to be worn in a manner as to not present a hazard to the employee or the food. No loose clothing, no revealing clothing. Loose jewelry can cause a safety hazard. Gloves, aprons, hair nets, beer nets, and other company issued outer garments must be removed and placed in lockers prior to entering the break room, lunch rooms, restrooms, or leaving the facility. Employees shall maintain an adequate personal hygiene regimen. Employees shall wear hair nets, beer nets, in food packaging and processing areas. Personal items such as lunch, purses, or jackets shall not be stored in the work areas. Personal cell phones and other such devices are not permitted in the work areas. Leave them in your lunch box or in your car at all times. Pockets above the waist shall be empty in food processing areas. Pest control, daily work practices and ways that you can help keep our facilities pest free. Pest management is a critical component of food safety programs worldwide. One key aspect of sanitation is the prevention immediate elimination of any and all pest infestations in the food plant. Always maintain good housekeeping in all areas of the warehouse. Keep all work and storage areas clean, sanitary, and dry. Promptly clean up any spills that could attract pests. Keep lids closed on all trash tops and garbage barrels. Inform pest control personnel or your supervisor whenever you see evidence of any live or dead pests. This includes but not limited to bugs, mice, or birds in the warehouse. Observe the GMP signage at the entrance to the warehouse. All doors must remain closed when not in use. Doors must never be propped open. Doors to break rooms and offices shall remain closed. Insect, rodent, or bird activity must be reported to supervisors immediately. Always maintain the painted perimeter or white line areas to be left clear at all times. Report any damaged pest control devices to your supervisor immediately. All damaged or out of spec material should be removed from available stock and moved to damaged areas. Under no circumstances may, may an associate consume or save for future consumption damaged or off-spec product. Notify your supervisor immediately of any damage to the facility or equipment. Damage creates potential problems and pests try to find their way into our facilities. Allergy Awareness Food Allergens the food allergens listed below may produce life-threatening reactions in sensitive individuals. They are milk and milk products, eggs and egg products, fish and fish products, crustacean shellfish and shellfish products, tree nuts such as Brazilian nuts, walnuts, hazelnut, cashews, pistachios, pecan. Each type of tree nut should be considered an allergen distinct from other listed tree nut allergens wheat and wheat products, peanuts and peanut products, soybean and soybean products. Warehouse management will review and list all products within the building for each account that are considered allergens according to the major eight food allergens. This will be posted in the break room on an allergen awareness posting. Warehouse personnel must be trained to move allergens from the loading docks into these areas. If allergens and not allergens are to be stored on the same racks, the materials containing allergens must be placed on the lowermost racks. If any of the allergens are dam damaged and the product spills, notify your supervisor and follow the spill process when cleaning up the spill. If you have food allergies, notify your supervisor immediately. Glass and brittle plastic policy. At Shippers Warehouse, we try to eliminate all glass, brittle plastics, and ceramics in the operation as much as possible. However, sometimes it is not feasible to do so. As an associate of Shippers Warehouse, we need your help with this. Follow these guidelines below to help us keep our food storage areas safe. 
Glass, brittle plastics, and ceramics are not allowed in the storage areas unless it is being stored for a customer or is specified as an essential glass, brittle plastic, and ceramic. Under no circumstances are associates allowed to bring glass, brittle plastics, and ceramics into the product storage zone with their personal effects. Light bulbs, fixtures, windows, mirrors, skylights, or other glass, brittle plastics, or ceramics suspended over product zones or damaged or packaging supplies will be of the safety type where feasible. If breakage occurs, please contact supervisor immediately and help keep it from contaminating customer product. Security and food defense. Food warehouses have to incorporate a certain degree of security in the operation. Threats can come from various sources, even from outside the company, such as terrorists, as well as inside the company, disgruntled workers. Food warehouses have to deal with safety risks such as theft, penetration of secure areas, assault, and vandalism. How you can help. The warehouse requires a certain level of security. Report any visitors in the facility that have not properly reported and or signed our visitor's log. Inspect and monitor daily the equipment you work with. Ensure that product and rework is properly labeled at all times. Report missing stock to your supervisor. Keep areas where sanitation chemical or other hazardous substances are stored are locked up safely. Keep secured storage areas locked. Report broken windows and locks. All, door, all dock doors and personnel doors must be locked at all times when not in use. Exceptions are driver entrances, employee entrances, and main entrances of the building. Security and food defense. Visitor rules. All visitors entering the facility must register at an entrance. That includes truck drivers, contractors, vendors, auditors, etc. Visitors to wear some form of identification and a safety vest at all times. All visitors should be escorted by an associate while in the building. All visitors should sign the liability log when entering and leaving the facility. All visitors vendors are expected to comply with safety and company rules at all times. Associate rules. Keep your shippers issued ID with you at all times and clearly visible. Do not allow others to use your company ID badge or access card. If your access card or ID badge is lost or stolen, report this to a member of management or the HR department. Do not give building or gate access to strangers, including visitors or vendors. If you exit the building, the door must remain closed. Facility measures. Gated secured entrances to the trailer lot is mandatory. Security cameras monitor the facility entrances and the perimeter on the outside in many areas within the facility where possible. Sanitation, chemical control, and cross-contamination. Sanitation is the hygienic means of promoting health through prevention of human contact with hazards. Chemical control is the elimination of chemical contamination of ingredients food contact services, and finished product, and to protect employees from exposure to chemicals. Cross-contamination is the process by which bacteria or other microorganisms are transferred from one substance to another with harmful effects. Chemical control includes restricted access of chemicals to authorized personnel only, locked storage area for all chemicals, Food grade chemicals are segregated from non-food chemicals. Chemical inventory lists of all chemicals on site. SDS or safety data sheets are readily available to personnel through KHA. Chemical approval prior to use by corporate safety. All chemical bottles must have an OSHA approved label. Sanitation includes daily, weekly, monthly cleaning schedule trash removal to help with pest prevention, identify unsanitary conditions, clean product zones, equipment, and racking of dust and debris, using the correct color-coded cleaning supplies, ensure cleaning chemicals are stored in locked storage areas. 
Cross-contamination includes hand washing, proper product storage do not store hazards above non-hazard products, hazards, spills cleaned up immediately for avo to avoid spill getting on other product, color-coded mops, brooms, and buckets do not use the same mop, broom, or bucket for general cleaning and hazard cleaning. Shipping and receiving. Receiving. All trailers will be inspected to ensure equipment is in proper working order, free of infestation, and has no food safety or security concerns. Before unloading, ensure that safety cones are in place, glad hand locks are attached, wheels are chopped, or lock to dock locks. Conduct trailer inspections to ensure there is no evidence of tampering and seal is intact, Always witness the seal being broken and locks removed. Seal matches packing list and documented. No debris on the floor. No protruding nails in the trailer. No broken glass in the trailer or on product. No unshielded or unprotected glass. No holes in the trailer. No evidence of insect or pest activity. No moisture or, or odors in the trailer. Temperature readings are within guidelines, no evidence of blood in trailer or on the product. If any of these conditions exist, stop and contact your supervisor immediately. Shipping. All inbound carriers must have an appointment prior to being unloaded. Before loading, ensure that safety cones are in place, glad hand locks are attached, and wheels are chalked or locked in dock locks. Conduct trailer inspections. Follow the same process as the inbound trailer inspection. Prior to loading, ensure that pallet count is verified. There is no damage, infestation, or contamination. If this condition exists, stop and notify supervisor immediately. Product with infestation must be removed from the warehouse immediately. Other damages need to be placed in the damage area away from chemicals non-food items, and available product. There is not any other product or pallets that could contaminate the product being loaded. Always ensure that this occurs. Shipping and receiving continued. Shipping. Before loading the product, you should inspect for damage to product, perform a pallet count and verify product, verify staging location, Verify you have the correct trailer and carrier. It is the loader's responsibility to verify all pallets are loaded and nothing is left on the dock. The loader or the welcome center associate must witness the assigned seals being applied to the trailer. Secure load per customer requirements. This could be using load bars, airbags, etc. Driver is released once the seal is intact and paperwork is signed. Secure load per customer's requirements. Storage. When placing a pallet of chemicals into a location, it must be in a location that is designated for chemical storage and is at least 10 feet away from any food product or food packaging. If you're putting away a pallet and the white wood is damaged, change or support the pallet with the same grade pallet and put away. Notate on paperwork and report to your supervisor for billing. If you're picking and the pallet you are asked to get has a hold placard on it, contact your supervisor and leave the pallet in the location. Shipping and receiving continued. Storage. When placing or pulling full pallets at storage locations, ensure you have the proper equipment for the area you are working in. Aisles less than 12 feet require narrow aisle equipment, stand-up reach or stand-up lift. Flammable or aerosol storage areas require EE-rated equipment, limited spark. Double-deep rack, you must have a stand-up reach with double-deep capabilities. Bulk storage, you should not have equipment without riggers. This will damage the product. If you're not trained on the equipment required for the area your task is assigned to, get with your supervisor to get that pick or put away reassigned. Damages. 
Defined as damage to internal product or to carton that can affect internal product quality per customer requirements. When placing product into the damage hold area, food products must be placed in the area with at least one pallet distance from any chemical product. Food products that are infested with pests must be destroyed within 48 hours. When you find damage in the warehouse, it must be 1. Taken to the damaged area and the WMS updated to show product is damaged. 2. Segregated from non-compatible products in the damage area, same as in the warehouse. 3. Processed into the damage area and proper forms completed and attached to the product as needed. And 4. Placed into the damage area at least one pallet distance from any good product. Reefer trailers, shipping and receiving. When inspecting a refrigerator trailer, ensure walls and ceilings are in good condition. There are no holes exposing insulated or outside air. There are no cracks or panel separations. Door seals are intact around the edge of the doors. Check the setting of the reefer unit and test the temperature at the rear and nose of the trailer. Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, also known as HACCP. HACCP is a production control for the food industry. It is a process that identifies where potential contamination can occur and strictly manages and monitors these points as a way of ensuring the process is in control and that the safest product possible is being produced. For instance, biological, chemical, physical, etc. HACCP, simply put, provides programs in place that help eliminate potential records from food to make it safe to eat. HACCP records must be accurate, signed, and dated. Prerequisite programs, programs that support HACCP, master sanitation schedules, GMPs, pest control programs, customer complaints, recall traceability, chemical control, allergen control, vendor programs, hold release, training programs, malicious contamination. Seven principal steps of HACCP. One, conduct a hazard analysis for each product type and process step. Two, identify any critical control points. Three, determine cr critical limits for each CCP. Four, develop monitoring procedures. Five, establish corrective actions. Six, perform verification procedures. And seven, develop an effective record keeping system. Crisis management. Typically, only management members learn more on crisis management, but for purposes of food safety today, we're all going to learn what crisis management means in our facilities. Crisis management refers to product recall and the site level management responsibilities in the event of a recall. To prepare for a real recall, we must complete a minimum of two mock recalls per year at each site, but complete as many as needed to be comfortable with the process to complete a real recall without any issues. Once you have been notified of a recall, you have two hours to complete the recall process and report back to the customer. Mock recalls must be completed in two hour windows and at least one must be completed outside of normal office hours, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 100% of all items by lot code if applicable are accounted for in the allotted time. If any part of the mock recall fails, not able to recover account for 100% of the product or not able to complete within two hours, an investigation of the items involved or a review of the process will be initiated. In an effort to prevent reoccurrence and any necessary corrective actions will be completed. A follow-up recall will be completed within 60 days. Media must only be addressed by the customer that the product belongs to per customer requirements or the president of Shippers Warehouse. All others must state no comment. If product is requested to be put on hold or have trucks returned to the facility, 
all managers must take this seriously and ensure the product is accounted for and placed on hold per the customer request and our hold and release process. Looking ahead, task specific training. Training does not stop with food safety. There's other types of training depending on the position you hold within the warehouse that you may need. Certain positions require specialized training. Your manager will notify you if this is, applies to you. For example, sanitation crews, material handling equipment operators, customer specific training. Who is responsible for food safety? All workers. Food safety and site security is everyone's priority. Be an active participant by following good sanitation practices daily and keeping your supervisor aware of any actual or potential sanitation or security issues so that they may be corrected immediately. Today we learned a lot about food safety, GMP, security, MHE, cleaning. We will now complete a quiz, which consists of 29 questions. Specialized positions, site quizzes, in addition to the above, could or will include shipping receiving quiz for all MHE operators and management, shipping receiving YUM MHE operators and management, this applies to Austell only, sanitation crew quiz, sanitation crew and management, and crisis management quiz, inventory control and management only. Thank you for your attention today. We understand this presentation contained a lot of information. You should know the public relies on all of us to ensure product is received and shipped properly for the health and welfare of all consumers. You have the most important job and that is to ensure all consumers, you included, receive safe products at their local supermarkets and or shopping stores. This safety program applies to you and your family when you think on the many stores you visit every day, Target, Walmart, Kroger, Tom Thumb, the public is counting on you to keep them safe. 